Is it right to use AI to bring back actors from the dead? Oh, okay, okay. So, just for a bit of context here, um, I've got a little bit of preparation around the historical precedent of the use of AI, some ethical concerns or the breakdown of the ethics, a little bit into the legality of it, but really... I've, I've just prepared some questions. I'll have to give a very brief overview and then we can go into it. I'm keen to understand your thoughts. How does that work for you? I'm very much looking forward to this, mate. Perfect. So, historical precedent. Go on. Why are we asking this for Alien Romulus specifically? Good, good idea. Let's, let's explain that. <laughs> <laughs> we just watched Alien Romulus in which Ian Holm was resurrected. Now, Ian Holm played the character of, you mentioned his name was Science in it. He's, he's referred to as Rook in this. I think he was called Rook in the original as okay. well, if I remember correctly. I wasn't yeah. sure. So he is brought back in this. He's a synthetic um, who is essential for the plot of Alien to drive home that we need to keep this alien alive, blah, blah, blah. You know what? It's not important. Anyway, he's been brought back in Alien Romulus again for kind of driving the plot forward so that it syncs enough with the the rest of the franchise uh, and what they've done is leveraged ai as well as practical effects and any other special effects to effectively nice use of the word effect there make it seem like he's there make it seem like he's performing and acting in this film now he's been dead i, I want to say a couple of years now okay. uh, and this isn't the first time this has happened one of the worst in terms of the effects that were used that we've seen it's coming up more and more in this age of ai we've got the ability to deep fake and use ai to basically bring people back to life yeah. how do we feel about it they've been using it a while for a lot of big franchises now is it right are they going about it the right way do i feel comfortable with it do you feel comfortable with it that's what we're going to discuss sure here. so Historical precedent. So the use of a deceased person's likeness in film dates back decades. Obviously, then it was very different to how it looks now. Uh, the practice has evolved significantly in many of the ways I just mentioned. But to give you an example of some of the early cases, what they used to do was things like stock footage and body doubles. Unsurprisingly, they couldn't do a crazy amount more than that. Right. Some examples that it, um, I've looked at here uh, would be Plan 9 from Outer Space. So... Bella Lugosi, um, who was one of the first Draculas. He was used in that, um, and the death led director Edward to use stand-ins and recycled footage. Now, in 1990s, although we had CGI in place, you got uh, a bit of a, a mix of, <laughs> of effective effects and mm, kind of computerized versions of people. Forrest Gump uses it to to that effect, yes. where it takes real footage and sort of superimposed Forrest in uh, and then overdubs it. So, for instance, there's a scene where Tom Hanks um, is with JFK. He's getting presented with a Medal of Freedom or something like that. Right. Uh, and JFK, the, the sequence shows JFK from some videotapes of the White House have been presenting the medal. Forrest Gump's literally superimposed in and then they overdub someone with a JFK impression and because their m mouth is moving so it looked fine yeah it's it's more it, it just looks of the time you don't okay. really okay. you don't really go against it but then we get to the 2000s and then there's the increasing use of cgi for deceased actors most notably in gladiator which we looked yes. at last week where ollie reed was in the actual film up to a point yes. died and then they put him in a couple of scenes basically with his, his face superimposed again on and that seemed to be the way that they were uh, going about it kind of limited screen time just put him in smart really smart way it? of doing it but if you want to check out our gladiator episodes just done it it's on our youtube yeah, channel literally last um, last episode or oh, it probably was released a couple of episodes before um, but we yeah. talk a bit about ollie reed in that and what we thought about his performance and and his character now the real problem comes in the 2010s and 2020s so 2010s you start to get photorealistic resurrection effectively uh, for instance you've got furious 7 with paul walker when he died um, and then that's followed by rogue one where and this is quite a famous example of it it being a bit 
where where are we going with the ethics of this? So Peter Cushing was the person who played Grand Moff Tarkin in the original Star Wars. He died in 1994. And they brought back him in the likeness that he had in the original Star Wars for that film. Also, we had Carrie Fisher who died and she was brought back in Rise of Skywalker. Disney are really um, up there in terms of driving this this use of bringing people back from the dead because they, I believe, retain the likeness of a lot of their characters. Uh, at this point, we also get legal frameworks that come into place. So the actors' estates are often asked and are involved in the decisions, right. presumably with quite a lot of money on the line as to <laughs> yeah, yeah. if you can let us use these, here's your payout. Um, the laws governing posthumous rights to one's likeness vary by country and state. In the US, states like California and New York have specific laws regarding posthumous rights of publicity, typically extending up to 70 years after death. So it's similarly a bit like the copyright laws here where maybe you yeah. don't get your likeness. It goes into the public domain Ooh. 70 years after death. That's weird. Which is weird, but also kind of makes sense because how would you do things like films about Napoleon mm. or films about famous historical oh, figures? So are they point, already that. in the public domain? Uh, and then you've got 2020, so AI, deep fake, the example most recently of Alien Romulus and uh, Ian Holm. Really, this has been happening for a long time, but now it seems like we mentioned the uncanny valley in this instance. But it, because of how realistic things are getting, it seems to be becoming more uncomfortable for people when you can actually like completely mimic a person's voice and likeness. Mm -hmm. Is that in good? Is it is that in good ethical consideration? Yeah. What What do you think? Well, I reckon it's definitely important to divide that question into ethical and artistic, mm. uh, because it didn't look good in Romulus. Um, <laughs> but I think that the artistic one is maybe less interesting because that will just be as technology gets better. Um, it's a great point you make. Like we will forgive ethical concerns when the art is good. Like for sure, yeah. Generally speaking. If something is done well, people are much more forgiving of their their yeah. moral compass. And then obviously there's going to be a question of what it is that you're making them do because it seems like, oh, yeah, well, come on, like it's not that bad. But then it's like, well, uh, we just did, uh, and I won't go into any detail, but we just did Deadpool, which is a very mm -hmm. slapstick, violent film. If you brought Ian Holm back and put him in some of those action sequences, that would be that would be just... Uh, very undignified thing to do to somebody and so it's like okay well what are you actually is the question can you do anything or at what point do we draw that line where it's like this is not okay to be making them look like they're doing this thing or yeah do you does it effectively make sense to have people give consent for their likeness I mean this may be something that they do anyway but given they have to ask the estate are people giving consent for their likeness posthumously now as part of their contracts? Yeah. Is that something that sh has to happen? Like, yeah. if I die, can you use me for AI resurrection? Yeah. And yeah. the other element, I think the real big ethical concern is the financial motivation. So is the use of a deceased person's likeness primarily to be driven by financial gain unethical? That comes into the question of art versus money as well yeah. like can you be broad can you cast a broad brush with this can you say yeah. that it's always wrong or it's always right or is it case by case that's a good point yeah can you yeah why not like that's kind of where my head's at okay mm. why would we not do this because yeah. i think that would probably shed some light on it and i guess because even your own estate can't really truly give consent to whether you are okay with that you know with the message that they are giving or whatever and so there's something very spiritually wrong about doing that do you know what i mean I mean, even with the estate's permission yeah i mean actors will do things that are maybe against their specific moral code for the case of money or for the case of you know just getting a leg up in the industry but they always have the choice or you feel like there it. is the autonomy there whereas taking that barrier like that barrier at death yeah, <laughs> crossing yeah. it 
should we be less okay than we are with it? Yeah, yeah. So there's the question of why not? And then there's also a bit of a question as well of like, do we do we even really need to be doing this? Like, okay, it was cool to bring back Ian home, fine. Mm. But like, do we have to? Is, Is it, it lazy? Really that, like, yeah, like... I, I, Okay, I'll, I'll make an extreme case. There might be a situation in which it absolutely doesn't make sense to have anybody else playing that character. Mm. It feels okay to me to do an AI deepfake of them playing that same character in a specific situation. There is a, I can see a very specific situation arising that I would feel okay with, and I can also see a very specific situation which I would not be okay with. And I think that it, what that means is there just kind of cannot be any broad strokes to it. And there's just going to have to be the sort of traditional legal thing where we just kind of start building up a case-by-case -case basis of what's okay and what's not, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely something that needs to be more fleshed out than it is at the moment. Mm. Let me ask you this. If you died tomorrow yeah, and we decided, I decided to ask your family if I could use your likeness for one more episode. Yeah. Where we discuss, we'll discuss Jamie's favourite film and we had the AI technology in place to perfectly replicate your voice for sure. and your image and we decided to release a video performance of us speaking. <laughs> you obviously, this is just a, a, an imprint, an in, interpretation of your real opinions based on, based on, Oh, the catalogue of a evidence. statistical analysis of my previous opinions. And then it was able to... How would you feel about that? I, honestly, if I was watching down from above, personally, no issue whatsoever at really? all. In fact, I would even maybe go a step further and say I would be quite far on the extreme of like, once I'm dead, I'm dead, mm -hmm. and I don't care. What if he made better points? Well, if it's going to be a statistical analysis <laughs> of me, Fred, it's not going to be done. <laughs> <laughs> what if you looked and got jealous of how good he was the guy never learns he's just stuck like that forever yeah that's my one caveat if you're going to do an AI deep fake of me just make sure it slowly knows a little more about movies each week um, yeah I I personally wouldn't care would mm. you? yeah I think so you would even if it, even if it, you knew it was going to be nice let's say even I, if I asked you before you died I think if I saw something let's say specifically for opinions mm -hmm. if i saw something giving an opinion pretending to pretending be to be me <laughs> i would really struggle with that now, okay yeah that's obviously different to this where it's not like the character is their own like at least in part the uh, character is the, the organizations or the writers or the producers like yes they have they are identifiable with that character and they, they clearly are a part of them but in the case that I just gave there like that really is you you yeah, are it's a okay. representation yeah. of you so I think that I'd have a much bigger issue with that personally but would I have as much of an issue uh, of someone bringing a character that I played say maybe not yeah okay yeah I think I think if to make things interesting I will try to give an answer of what I think and mm. I, I think that uh, it's fine, personally. I think that, like, we probably want to come up with some kind of specific regulations to be like, you can't do this and you can't do that. But broadly, you can, you know, we, we can come up with some rules mm -hmm. to kind of keep us in a correct playing field. But spiritually, ethically, I don't think, I don't think that there's anything wrong with taking a dead actor and having them perform more roles. I don't see why it would matter. They're dead. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> they are dead. <laughs> and they have no rights anymore. Um, but what did you think? Do you think that we are going about this the right way? Does there need to be more changes made with the advancement of AI, with deep fakes, legislatively? What are we doing about this? Do more conversations need to be had? Are we right? Are we wrong? Are we way off? Is there anything you'd add to this conversation? Let us know below. I'm going to try and put a poll below. I don't okay. know if I can, but if I can, there will be a poll in the comments. 
So uh, check that out. And but... it will be, did Ian Holm look weird? <laughs> and there's only going to be one. <laughs> yes or there's yes. There's only going to be one option. And it's just going to be, yes, he looks creepy. <laughs> okay. um, thanks so much for listening, yeah, guys. Thanks we'll, for listening. Uh, Bit of a different one. one. If you liked it, give it a like, give it a subscribe. Thank you.